Now joining Chris Pack. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Dave Whiteley, Technical Director of Invisage UK Limited. Uh, this is another Friday webinar um, entitled Managing the Content Center, specifically for Autodesk Inventor 2011. Um, this webinar will last about 30 minutes, and it is being recorded, so I hope to get uh, this and an earlier webcast on YouTube later this afternoon. Okay, let's get started. Um, so, uh, problem. Designers using the content center, we get uh, this quite a lot from customers where they're complaining that uh, the designers are using the content center. Well, why is this? Um, is it a bad thing? Now joining. Well, possibly not. The content center itself um, gives us 700,000, last time I counted, fasteners, um, bearings, steel sections, etc., that we can use as an inventor. Um, now joining Richard The Oakley. problem being that the content center uh, will give us, okay, it will give us components, but they may well be the wrong material. They may well certainly have the wrong part number and probably have a very, very long description. And this can actually be improved. We can create a company specific content. You just need how to know how to do it and that's what I intend to do um, in the next uh, 30 minutes. Okay, so managing the content center. We create a company uh, read write library. We create, we can create more than one actually, but most companies just create the one. This enables us to edit our own content center content. Um, it does actually let us publish our own content center as well. I'm not going into this today. I may uh, um, cover this topic in another webcast, but this is purely how to uh, take content that um, is given to us from Autodesk and change it to use for company-specific uh, use, certainly for bills and materials and parts lists. We make this library accessible to the designers. If they haven't got access to it, they can't use it. We edit the library. Um, I'll show you how to do this in a minute. And then, if necessary, we turn off irrelevant standards. Um, you don't want users, designers, using JIS standards, for instance, if you don't uh, work with uh, Japan, or DOST for Russia, GB for China, and so on. So we can actually turn off irrelevant standards. This is probably a good practice um, once you've created your own content center, content in your read-write library. Okay, so let's have a look at this. First of all, um, if we take a look at Inventor first, um, there are two ways of accessing Content Center content. If you install Inventor off the DVDs, you will more than likely be not be offered the desktop content. Now, the desktop content is good uh, for single users. But it's also useful for a small group of users. But what you must be aware of is the fact that desktop content is on the desktop, as it says. It's actually on your computer. Um, they're very useful. They're quite small database files. You can create your own read-write ones, but the problem is, of course, the read-write one is only accessible to your computer. To get around this, if you use desktop content, you've got to copy your read-write databases around to other, over to other computers who may need to have access to it. Um, if I go to the Tools uh, tab and Application Options, in the Content Center tab in Application Options, we have two ways of accessing content. One is from the Inventor Desktop Content, which if you don't do any changes and you don't install the vault, is what you're going to get with Inventor. And that will locate the libraries in a standard folder location, which you can change if you want. But this is handy to know where these files are if you need to copy them around to other machines. Um, or you can switch over to Autodesk Vault Server. We'll take a look at the um, desktop content first, as this is what's uh, ticked here in my application options. So, how do we create our own read-write content library to start off with? Well, if you're using desktop content, we need to do this from the projects dialog box. Now, 
I'm in tutorial farms at the moment. I'm just working there at present just to, um, uh, so I don't actually damage any other projects. If I click on the bottom right hand button, just above done, this goes to the configure content center libraries dialog box. Now you'll see at the top immediately it says that I'm actually using Inventor Desktop Content, so it reminds me where the desktop content, uh, what it is, sorry, and where it is, so the library location. And what DOS Desktop Content, uh, content Center libraries are available to me, so the, all the standard libraries that are available to me, ANSI, ISO, DIN, and so on, are available to me in this list. They are all ticked. They're all read-only. I can't edit these. Now, normally when you install Inventor, you will get a read-write library for free. This one down here, my library, it's called. It's read-write, but you'll notice it's not ticked. This is one of the uh, features or functions you need to look at in Inventor should anybody be complaining that they can't find any content center libraries. You need to go into this dialog box and check that, first of all, the libraries are available. They'll be black. If they're red, it means they're not available. And secondly, they've got to be ticked, because if they're not ticked here, they won't be available in this particular project. So at the moment, my read-write library is not ticked, which means I don't have access to that library in this project. The ticks, by the way, are project-specific. The actual libraries themselves are there all the time. It's whether you've got them available for this particular project. If I tick this, my library is now available in the tutorial files project. I just click on save. It's now saved. I can now use that content center library in this project. To create a new one, if we just go back to that dialog, again, this is for inventor desktop content. All we've got to do is down the bottom here is click on create library. Put the name of the library in. OK on that. It creates the library for you. OK, up the top here in Visage, it's read write. It ticks it automatically to use it in this particular project. And I could untick my library because I don't want to use that one. I want to have actually access to the Envisage Read Write Content Center library when I do start creating my own company-specific data. So this is very, very important. OK, let's change things a little. Let's go to the application options and this time switch over to Autodesk, the Vault server instead. If I go over to the Vault server and minimize my inventor, and go to the data management server. Now this is the Vault server. If I just explain what's happening here, um, if you are a member of a team um, and you want to share content center data, you would be better off using the Vault. You don't actually have to use the Vault for checking in, checking out if you don't want to, but you have to install the Vault server on a machine somewhere. This enables you, if I just log in here, to use shared content. Um, I would suggest these don't go on the main company servers. If you've got another server available, you put the Vault server on that machine. It does help a great deal with speed and access. But what we've got here is we've got the Vault. OK, you may not want to use it. It doesn't matter. But most importantly, we've got our content center libraries. Now in here I've got a read-only one, it's got a padlock against it, it's the ISO library. And I've got my read-write library, which has got an unlocked padlock against it called Envisage. I can create as many read-write libraries in this as I like. All I've got to do is right-click on library, create library, and put in the information about the, the name of this. Uh, let's call this uh, webinar. It's going to be in the Inventor 2011 partition. What they mean by that is that Inventor 2011 can actually access this particular content center library. You can change this to a different earlier Inventor partition if you've got older inventors running on the same network. OK, on that, that will then create me a read-write content center library, just like I did earlier on the desktop content, but that was in the project dialog box within Inventor. So we can create as many libraries as we like, in the vault. Now joining David Waitling. Okay, so I've created um, 
a read-write library in the vault. I've also created one in desktop content purely to show you how you do it in two different methods. But it depends on you as a company how you want to use this. If you're a larger group, it's probably better off, you're probably better off using the vault to do this because then the read-write content center libraries will be available to anybody that are logged into the vault. They don't necessarily have to be using the vault, okay? So this is quite useful if you don't want to use the vault but you want to share the content center libraries. Okay, so that said, let's pop it back into Inventor. We'll go to the application options and double check now where our um, read-write library is going to be. Let's go back to the desktop content. And um, we'll just check in projects that in this we've still got access to the read-write content center library, which we do. The one that's ticked is Envisage, it's read-write. I will have access to that particular library and I can write anything I like from the content center into that library. So you've got to have at least one for this to work. Okay, so all we do now is if we go into Tools, we'll see our Content Center Editor. It's in the Content Center area of the ribbon, Editor. This puts us into the Content Center Editor. This will look at all of the content. So you'll notice here I've got slightly grayed out. This isn't your screen. This is because um, certain things are turned on or off within uh, the content center, I'll explain in a minute. But you'll notice, for instance, that if I go to socket head, and I go to, say, ISO 4762, a socket head screw, you notice it's grayed out, all these are grayed out. And that's because, at the moment, all the content is read-only. That's why this is all grayed out in the editor. If I look at this library view, I can look and all the different libraries and what are in those libraries. So if you remember at the in the list earlier, I had an Envisage read-write library. If I look at that, it's empty. There's nothing in there yet. If I look at ISO, all, there will be in there all my ISO fasteners. If I change this to what we call merged view, it will show me everything. So to create my own content, this is how we do it. If I go into fasteners and bolts, and socket head, and I choose the ISO 4762, and right click on that, I can now do a number of things with this. I can copy it to Envisage, or I can save a copy. Now copy to will link it, so it will keep uh, an eye on the original ISO standard. I, know, I tend to use save copy as more than anything else, so if you go to save copy as, to bring a dialog box up for us. It'll ask me what library do I want to copy it to. As an independent family, I'm not going to link this either, so it's going to copy a brand new um, library over to Envisage. I'm going to give this a name. This is going to be 8.8 uh, .8 cap head I'll do, bolt. And we'll give it a description as well. Now this is what will come through to the browser in the assembly tree. So when you start inputting these into an assembly, what you see in the browser on the left-hand side will be the family name followed by the size. So you want to keep these as short as you can. Okay, on that. And what actually happens is it copies the data from the read-only database into my Envisage read-write database. You notice now certain things have come have gone bold. It's had to um, the actual folders, the socket head folder and the bolts folder, have now gone bold to show that a copy has been put into my read-write library and uh, in, has been put into my read-write library. And also further down or further up, we should see there we are in bold now an 8.8 8 cap head bolt. The reason why this is in bold is it's editable. It's actually been copied into the into my read-write database. Everything else is grayed out because read-only. That's the way it works here. To do any work on this now, we must change to the Envisage view. And here we can see 